CataractCoach.com, a resident's 200th cataract surgery. Let's watch this video together and make some helpful suggestions. So of course this is a resident case starting off with a diamond blade for a paracentesis, that's nice. It's a real cataract, a lot of cortical changes there. Looks like some tripan blue dye, that's a good idea in this case, especially because that's a whole quadrant of cortical opacities that are going to block the view for the rexus. Looks like diluting that down with either BSS or maybe some anesthetic. And now here comes the viscoelastic. So disperse the viscoelastic. I'd actually prefer you to go across the eye and backfill it because then you're doing a good exchange. You're taking out aqueous or saline and you're implant, you're injecting the viscoelastic. Now fixating the eye with that uh, cannula and making the incision, the incision looks pretty good. So that's a nice way of doing it. I prefer a fixation ring, but this certainly works pretty well. Um, let's see what we got next here. Cystotome, to start the rexus. So setting up the scope, that's good. Poking here in the middle and getting that flap turned over. That looks pretty good. And then doing this in the counterclockwise manner. And now coming to the forceps. Ooh, fancy forceps here. Some real micro forceps. These are helpful if you have a hard time um, with gaping of the incision. And starting that rex, it looks like these forceps are also marked off at every millimeter, so you can really get a good measurement. But you see, you're not measuring it. Oh, there it is. That's a measurement. But now stick with that. Obviously, in this case, we want a good, a good five millimeter rexus. So continuing it here, good pivoting in the incision. And these forceps certainly do make it a lot easier than compared to traditional forceps. Now here's where you're making the rexus too small. No, 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 no. Keep it bigger. Keep it bigger. Uh, it's a little small. And you can see it's a little eccentric and a little small. So that's not five millimeters. That's probably more like four and a half. Gonna make it a little bit more challenging. Let's see the hydro dissection here. So hard to see if a wave goes through. If you go on the other side instead, where you have less cortical opacity, you'll be able to see the fluid wave go across a lot easier. And this is the very common scenario of the cortical whiteout. So now that cortical material, those liquefied lens material, has been dispersed, and so the red reflex is lost. So nice uh, job of using the tripan blue dye. We can still see that rexus. Now, given that it's a little bit smaller rexus, you've got to be very careful that we don't damage the rexus edge with the FACO chopper or the FACO tip. Let's see the technique here. Cleaning up some anterior cortical stuff. And bevel is up, so we're going to do a groove. Yep, look like a groove down the middle here. That's a pretty good groove. And obviously staying within the confines of the caps rexus initially, and then once you get deeper, you can go under the rexus edge. That looks like a pretty reasonable groove. You may want to widen it up a little bit, have a little bit more working room down there on the bottom. And let's see what's going to happen now. A crack in half? Yeah, there's a good crack. Propagating it all the way through. I like that technique. Remember, you want to be careful to really propagate that chop or the crack all the way through. Now, let's see. Looks like a horizontal chop. Nicely done. Now, this is a good stop and chop technique. And this is chopping it in the bag. And the nice part of making that initial groove is that you have a place that you can deeply embed the FACO tip like that, and the chopper can go around and, and chop off little pieces. So making good short work of that first half. All looks pretty good. Let's look around the eye. Got good draping. All the lashes are out of the way. The lid margin looks like it's pretty well sequestered. Tear film looks good. No oily secretions on the tear film. Good job. So for 200 cases, then you're doing a fantastic job here. So the incision is well constructed. You can look at the hydration of the FACO incision. You can see the stromal walls there. That looks pretty good. I would have started maybe just a little bit closer to the limbus for the incision. The chop technique is excellent. Very nice horizontal chop here. Keeping the eye in primary throughout the case. So for 200 cases in, you are doing very well. Keep up the good work. Just remember... You've heard it here before. You can't be a great surgeon if you haven't done a thousand cataracts. So keep up the work, but I have, uh, I have great hope for you. I see a lot of promise here in the skill set. So very nicely done. Taking that last piece down. There it goes. Excellent. Now there's an epinuclear shell. Let's see, can you get that with the FACO probe? Nice and gentle. Here we'll go barely giving vacuum, no energy. And if you can't, don't worry, do the IA probe. Better to be safe here. So there you go, looking good. Looking really good. And so for cortical cleanup, looks like uh, is that a coaxial tip coming in the review. Yep, there you go. And so taking out the cortex here. So far, so good. Now, you're going to have a little bit of a tough reach. Again, it's a smaller rexus. It's going to be a little harder to access that. 
In this case, the wrecks end up probably about the four and a half millimeter diameter, and we want more like five. Now, a half millimeter doesn't sound like much, but hello, we're ophthalmologists. We're operating inside a very tiny space. We're used to very tiny distances. And you'll see at the end here, when you get the IOL in the eye, in all likelihood, it'll be a six millimeter optic, and you'll see the degree of overlap. And so that's why I even aim for five and a half millimeter size for my caps rexus for many routine cases. And so cleaning up this cortex. Now, mind you, if this patient was scheduled to have another surgery very soon, like scheduled to have a part of the plane of a trachectomy with a gas bubble, or maybe scheduled to have a trabeculectomy or a glaucoma procedure, then maybe, yeah, you'd want the smaller rexus so that you can ensure that the eye well stays in the capsule bag despite any changes or fluctuations in pressure. So cleaning up that cortex looks excellent. Just a little bit left. That epinuclear shell came out nicely. Again, that sub area is a little bit more of a challenge, but you're doing a really good job. That is fantastic. You know, we're in July now of the academic year, and this is a, a big challenge. July and August are the biggest challenge of the academic year because this is where we are really getting our hands wet and trying to climb up that steep learning curve. So good job there. You may want to polish up a little bit of the undersurface of that anterior rim. You see that haze that's there, that, that lens material. Not critical to do so, certainly in, within your training. It's not that important early on in the early stages, but... Here we come, here you go, here's your lens. Now, see, this This is not ideal, that's not ideal. No, 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 no. Use a second hand, get some counter-traction, counter-fixation. I'd rather you enlarge the incision. Remember, no. if anyone tells you the cornea will stretch, it's not stretching, you're ripping it. And now you can see, ah, look at the baby rexus. So it is a small rexus, maybe even four millimeters, between somewhere between four to four and a half millimeters in diameter. And again, that makes the surgery far more challenging. Now it's going in, removing viscoelastic. If you're 200 cases in, you should be able to go behind the optic to remove some viscoelastic. Remember, if you have a lens like a toric, an EDOF, a trifocal lens, you're going to have to go behind the lens to remove viscoelastic to seat the lens right on the poster cap. So, oh, good job, you read my mind. You can obviously tell I'm watching this video for the very first time together with you. We are shooting this audio for the video at the same time that we're watching it for the very first time. So. Cleaning that out pretty nicely. Again, now you can see the incision's already gotten a little bit hydrated just from all the maneuvering within the case. It's, it's a nice long tunnel length, maybe a little on the long side, in fact, but it'll seal up nicely. So cleaning up pretty well. And again, you want to just perfect your technique next time. Oh, don't hydrate the walls of the incision. That's better. There's the roof. The roof's all you need. Don't cause a huge amount of stromal hydration there. That's better. Just a little bit. Minimize that. You know, I got to tell you, you did a beautiful job. There's a lot still to learn, but you will certainly become a master surgeon. Thanks for submitting your video. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.